Hey everybody, it's Chavin and nobody else's auto. We are back here at the Auburn Court Duesenberg factory in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Doug. I absolutely love coming here. This place is so amazing. Thanks for having us. You always share so much knowledge with us. You've always got so much cool stuff here. But when I walked in today, I saw something that I've never seen in person, but it sure looked familiar because I've seen it on TV a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one's nicknamed the Picker Car. So American Pickers uh, bought this car during one of their episodes several years ago. Um, was able to buy it from a gentleman. They called me. I was their on-air expert on Auburn's Cords and Duesenbergs. And my friend of Mike's and Mike Wolf called me and he says, hey, this car, I think I can buy what's it worth. So we talked about it. He ended up making a deal. They had to tear the side of the barn off to get the car out. It was all brush painted with latex house paint, all done in kind of a off-white. We brought it down here and Mike says, I just want a survivor car can you get it running for me and get that house paint off? And, uh, and we did, and we had to work on the engine a little bit, and uh, we had to put a new radiator in it and a few things, but this is a rust-free, true barn find that Mike Wolf found on American Pickers, and we got it running. They, Mike and uh, Danielle came in for the reveal and then got in the car and drove it all the way back to where the original owner's home was on a 105 degree hot day. And Mike was crazy enough. They said, will this car make it that far? And I said, well, it's like asking somebody to get out of their wheelchair and run a marathon, but <laughs> it might work. And by golly, he drove it all the way there. Uh, the car performed, they were able to give the lady a ride in it. Uh, her husband who sold it to him had passed away. And so it's got a history. <clears throat> it's been shown all over the country. Mike did sell it and uh, it ended up in a museum and I was able to buy it back from the museum here just a few weeks ago. And um, they said it was just like it was the day it left here. Except when we got it, the engine had a few problems. And so we pulled the engine out of it and are going through the engine right now. We're going to kind of detail out the engine compartment this time, put a, a fresh engine back in it. It's original engine, but freshened up, and we'll redo the engine compartment. And then at some point, maybe the car will undergo a restoration. But a lot of people don't want to see them restored. They love the survivor look that they're calling it these days. And this is essentially its original paint. It's a rust-free car. It's original leather interior. Original. I mean, this car is original. Everything on this car is correct. Uh, and it's a six-cylinder car. They made this also in an eight-cylinder and in a supercharged version. This is not an eight-cylinder, it's not a supercharged version. Even though the bodies will interchange, nothing else is the same. The engine is smaller, the suspension is different, the fenders are shorter, the running boards are different, but the bodies are exactly the same. Whether it's a, a half-million dollar supercharged Phaeton, this body is the same body. Uh, Six-cylinder cars don't bring as much money, but they're bringing good money because, uh, especially in this condition. So, and this one's got a story and it's famous. And um, so here it is: the American Pickers 1935 Auburn Model 653 is back where, back where it started. We built this car originally in 1935. We got it running for Mike Wolf a few years ago, and here it's back at the factory again. So now you're actually going to go through the drivetrain. Right. You got it running last time. It was running. It was performing. But now you want to go through and make sure that it is, as far as drivetrain-wise, all correct, fresh, and ready to go now. Yeah, and th th this is a good driving car. There's six on there, and it has a two-speed rear in it. So this is a 70-mile-an-hour car, and it, they drive great. The little six-cylinder engines were bulletproof, uh, three-speed transmission, but with a two-speed rear end, since they give you six speeds. And uh, they're just a wonderful, wonderful little car. Uh, and they're really coming on as far as collectability and value. And everybody wants an open car, and they want an open car they can give their friend to ride in. And that's what's nice about a uh, convertible sedan or a Phaeton versus um, a Cabriolet or a two-seater. You can take all your friends for a ride. This does have a new top on it. If you want to put the top up on it, you certainly can. But again, if you got a convertible, why not? Yeah. Why, why drive it with the top, top up? Top, top <laughs> needs to be down. So it's a, it's a fun story, bit of a history, a true survivor car, um, and here it is. 
Well, it was super exciting to see it in person. Obviously, I've seen it on TV several times. And when you see it in person, you can really, the originality really comes through. Because mm -hmm. anybody that saw it when they found it, you can see, like I said, basically had a house paint or whatever on it. But obviously, the cowl is original paint. Right. And they you, didn't paint that. And you can see it's a real fine metallic, too. And, but when you look at that compared to the body where you guys cleaned it mm -hmm. and prepped back to the original finish, you can really tell how original this thing actually it, is. I mean, that's its original striping on it, you know, hand striped from back then. And like I say, there's not a speck of rust in this body. It's got a few little dings and, you know, barn rash, but it is a survivor car. And by golly, to go 90 years and still be running down the road, and Mike drove it a thousand miles, uh, you know, it's actually pretty impressive. I mean, that's even the original leather. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, original dash, original instruments. Nothing has been touched on this car. This is, this is a piece of history right here. Well, when you think 90 years, it, it says several things. It says, I mean, obviously it's original, and you don't find anything that's original in this condition after 90 years. But it also tells you how well Auburn built these cars. Right. That it is this well preserved. And granted, it was inside, but it still held up amazingly, even the finish. Yeah. Yeah. No, even the finish. The, um, you know, you can see it's been rubbed on a lot. And it was a two tone car originally, two tone blue. And um, you can even see the two tone on the belt line is under the door. So apparently they painted the belt line and painted the light blue on top of that. Um, windshield actually folds down, two knobs there, and windshield will fold forward. I don't know if it's been folded in 90 years, but uh, <laughs> loosen that knob over there. Let's see if it, if it will go forward. So you need, you need a breeze. That'd be pretty much right in the face at that point. That's right. <laughs> but the other thing about it is look at the, how heavy that stuff is. Yeah, I mean it was made to last. No, they were they were great cars, well built cars. This wasn't a re real expensive car. This car in 1935 was probably only around a thousand dollars. So you know, it, which is a lot more when you think of a Ford was five or six hundred, right. but it wasn't dramatically more. In fact, I think I saw an ad on the six cylinder that they actually had these advertised at one time for seven hundred ninety five dollars. And they said, they compared it to, to the price of meat and it was cheaper per pound to buy in Auburn than it was to buy meat. <laughs> well, it's an amazing car. It's got an amazing story. I was super excited to see it in person. Thanks for sharing some more information about it so we can all learn a little bit more about it, take a really good up close look at it. Because that's one thing about on TV, you don't really get a good up close look mm -hmm. at a lot of this stuff. We can show a lot of those details and your knowledge on these cars can really explain a lot of that stuff and really make it makes it make a lot more sense. And you'll see a lot of these cars too with side mounts. And this one you notice is a rear mount spare, uh, which I like and it's handy and that's a, a pretty clean look. A lot of people like the side mount, but this one happens to be a rear mount, rear mount spare car, which is actually a little rarer than the side mount cars. And you're right, it does it does give it cleaner lines on the sides, mm -hmm. you know. Well, Doug, once again, an amazing piece of automotive history right here at the Auburn Court Duesenberg Company in Broken Arrow. And the time you take with us, I super appreciate it, sharing your knowledge, sharing these cars, because this isn't stuff you see every day. You don't see these at your local cruise nights. No. And, and there's just not a lot of them out there. So your knowledge, your expertise, sharing that with us, can't thank you enough. Doug, once again, thank you, All sir. Right. Appreciate it. And uh, let's go see what other cool stuff you got around okay. here. Okay, sounds good.